Today I will tell you about different types of analysis in FEA. It actually makes sense to understand them all, simply so you know which analysis does what and what you miss when you do not include certain aspects of analysis. Of course, every discussion like this should start with the most obvious and most popular choice, and that is linear static. Vince Adams suggests in one of the Nathan's books that around 90% of all analyses done in the world are linear static. This is a very significant number, especially since you take into account what he also notes, and that is that more than 50% of those analyses are not linear or they are not static in nature. This means that linear static dominates everything, and there is a good reason for it. Namely, linear static is fast, cheap, and easy. Fast because it computes like crazy. This is a relatively simple task. I mean, a huge model can be now calculated on a smartphone, so computing time is not really an issue. Then it is also easy because, well, there are not a lot of settings you can do. If you have a model, you just press calculate and that's basically it. And also it is cheap because now uh, you usually get a free linear solver with most CAD systems you buy. So you basically don't even have to buy a license to perform a linear static analysis. However, uh, there is of course another part to it. And by this I mean it's not that linear static is stupid. By many, many years, this was the only FEA tool there was. This means that if something was nonlinear, doing a nonlinear analysis wasn't an option a lot, some time ago, simply because computing would take so much time that nobody would wait for outcomes. This means that a lot of rule of thumb had to be created simply to calculate things that are not linear nor static using this routine because it was the only available option. And you can use those rules today as well, even though using nonlinear approach or dynamic analysis is getting easier and easier as computing power of your refrigerator is getting greater than the computing power of computers they used when they started with FEA. Of course, in all analysis, you need to assume something. And linear analysis assumes the most. And when you take a look on the name, there are two words there. Linear especially means that it is not nonlinear. So linear analysis won't take into account geometrical nonlinearity, material nonlinearity, and contact. On the other hand, static as opposed to dynamic means that you won't take into account any inertial effects, there will be no vibrations whatsoever, and also you cannot analyze impact. So let's take a look and on each and every of those analyses in a bit more detail. If you follow my blog for quite some time, you most likely read several posts about nonlinear analysis. So let's start with dynamic stuff today. The first thing that linear analysis won't take into account is inertial effects. Those are all the things that happen when time is relatively short on the load you applied. Uh, this is something tricky to get, especially when you, as me, come from civil engineering background, because for us, uh, dynamic load simply means that you need to multiply it by four and it's a static load whatsoever. But uh, it's actually quite easy to show on a relatively simple example. I don't really enjoy fishing, but still, I hope that I got the proportions of fishing rod geometry good enough. When you take a look on the model on the left, you can see that the rotation I applied to the end of the handle basically does nothing. The fishing rod simply rotates, and that's basically it. On another hand, the fishing rod on the right moves 
quickly and you can see that it actually starts to deform and shape and that the deformation lasts even after the rotation is finished. Those are inertial effects. And this is something linear analysis will never take into account. For such effects to take place, you need to make a proper dynamic analysis. When it comes to vibrations, this is something linear static won't calculate as well. You see, if you have something that oscillates in your system, uh, this something will cause most likely vibrations to entire structure. Uh, this means that if those vibrations, the frequency of those vibrations, are close to one of the natural frequencies of whatever you're analyzing, uh, theoretically amplitude can get infinite or at least very, very large, uh, and this means uh, more or less certain failure. You can approach this problem from two standpoints. First one, is that you can enforce vibration. You simply load your model with a certain load, with a certain frequency, and checks what happens. That would be a more complex approach. The simpler and definitely more common analysis is model analysis. You simply calculate the natural frequencies of whatever you are trying to analyze, like our fishing rod, and based on that, you try to evaluate yourself in post-processing whether or not the oscillations have the frequency that is close enough to natural frequency of whatever you are analyzing to be dangerous. The next part is impact analysis. To be fair, I'm on the very edge of adding this to the list or not, simply because impact analysis is actually a dynamic analysis with contact. Uh, simply something falls on the ground, like a quite popular smartphone fall down tests or crash tests in automotive industry. All those impacts are so popular that I figured that I can make a separate entry about them. You see, when it comes to analysis like that, uh, you cannot, of course, analyze it with linear static. You need a dynamic uh, or impact analysis for that. But there are some rules sometimes in different industries where you simply take a dynamic load, you multiply it with a certain value, and then you apply it as a static load to perform a static analysis. So static analysis is not exactly defenseless about this problem. Of course, uh, if you trust that those multipliers have values that actually make sense. So we're done with the static part. Let's move to linear aspects. The first thing I want to discuss is nonlinear geometry. I think this is the hardest thing to describe in the entire pool of what we are talking here today. And so I will use a real life example, hoping that it will make things clear. Uh, if I would like to address this scientifically, I would say that uh, nonlinear geometry simply means that the formation of the model influences how the model reacts to the applied load. In a real life, it would work like this. If you can imagine a string and you would put a wet sweater on it, if you treat the string as a beam, the bending moment is so high, then the string would surely fail. However, in reality, string deforms like crazy and the flexion is quite high. Then the tensile force appears in a string that causes tensile reaction force on a support, horizontal one. Those two forces, the tensile force in a string and the tensile reaction force on the wall, they are within a certain distance from each other. That is the deflection of the string. The higher the deflection, the bigger the distance. Those two create a pair of forces that actually can carry bending. And this is why strings actually can uh, carry the weight of the laundry, even though if that would be a linear system, they wouldn't. Uh, this might be hard to believe, but luckily there is an easy thought experiment we can do. Imagine that I have a string that on one end is attached to a wall, and on another it simply lies on a table. If I load it here, the part of the string that lies on the table would fall down. This is easy to imagine, right? This is because the string is too weak to carry bending as a beam, and it tries to deflect and generate this horizontal force. 
sadly does support on a string on a table doesn't really allow to carry horizontal force, which means that this system won't work and this is why the string fails. On another hand, if you firmly attach the string on both ends to the wall, the tensile force can be generated and the string has sufficient capacity. Nothing fall on the floor. This is more or less what the geometrical nonlinearity means. I think it's important to notice that this is not a positive nor negative effect. Because, on one hand, the geometrical strengthening, as with the string, can happen, even though this actually causes additional horizontal reaction forces, which might be considered negative to whatever you attach the string to. On another hand, all buckling phenomena are also described by nonlinear geometry. So, it's not uh, ignoring geometrical nonlinearity doesn't mean that you are on the safe side, uh, by all means. The second nonlinearity type is relatively straightforward, and I think that when you say nonlinear analysis, most engineers already think about nonlinear material. It is quite obvious that most materials at the beginning react in a linear way, which means that strains are proportional to stresses. But at certain point, most materials ex show some nonlinear behavior. The most uh, common uh, is the steel chart, where at some point it actually starts to yield. When you use linear analysis, you won't take yielding or any other material nonlinearity effects into account. This means that uh, you simply operate in a linear regime, and if you manage to limit the strains and stresses in your material to that region, linear material is perfect for you, this is all you need. However, if you will get strains higher than those on the linear part. Sadly, linear material analysis won't show you errors. It will show you a very high stresses, as you can see on the chart here. This is, of course, not something you desire, and in such cases, you should actually use nonlinear material properties. The last part is contact, and whenever I talk about contact, I feel obliged to say that I am pretty aware that a lot of solvers uh, have a procedure that is called linear contact. However, this is still an iterative process, so to me this means it's nonlinear regardless of the name. Contact simply means that two elements can touch each other, but you can separate them without applying any force, like book lying on the table. If you press the book against the table, it will press, and you cannot simply squeeze the book inside the table, it resists, so there's contact. However, if you want to lift it up, there is no connection, you can easily lift the book up. This is a typical contact example. It is quite popular in many instances, and to me that would be when I analyze joints in steel structures simply because I have bolts in several places, but compression always is carried due to contact. And linear analysis, well, won't take that into account. Of course, there are small displacement and large displacement contact theories. This can be quite complicated, in fact, when you want to have a funky friction of uh, some sort included in the analysis. But the point is that if you make like a real typical linear static, there will be no contact. So, you cannot analyze those problems. More or less, this is the overview of FEA analysis you can perform. Of course, there are a lot of details, and this is not a tutorial, this is more or less me presenting you the scope of what can be done at all. Uh, in future videos and in future posts, I will address many nuances of the analysis, especially since uh, each and every one of them is pretty complex and they can mix together. Like you can add geometrical and material nonlinearity together in one example, which makes it even more complicated. So there is a huge space to discuss. However, I hope that you actually find this useful and that I managed to show you the very basics of different analysis. If you enjoyed this post, please share it with your friends. This would helped me a lot to spread the message and basically build my blog, which uh, I would really enjoy and I thank you for that in advance. If you like, somewhere below there is a link you can follow 
to get a free course or some sort of guide from me that I've prepared for you. Just search below this video because I don't know on which platform you will see it, so it's kind of hard to predict what is down there. Thank you for watching, have a great day and see you later.